Hello everyone, and welcome to the test flight of the DB-5, which is nicknamed the Javelin. This test flight comes only a day after the, the ill-fated test flight of the DB-4, uh, with uh, Pomeroy Kerman still missing in action, uh, though uh, still hopes to uh, find him. This was a scheduled flight. It was scheduled directly after the DB-4. And so the EDB has decided to, to proceed with it, especially since uh, this test flight uh, should not have should not have some of the issues that we saw with the DB4, uh, especially the very long burn of the Estes engine, which brought the DB4 so far away from from base. In this case, the rocket engine is an RL-10A3, and it will only burn for four minutes. And here we go. The pilot for this mission is Harbart Kerman. And because the EDB does not want to allow this plane to get too far away from base, its goal will be altitude, not speed. Harbard seems to have trouble keeping it on the runway, but he's got it now. And and we have uh, takeoff. Liftoff at 115 yeah, meters per second. That's uh, approximately 230 meter, uh, miles per hour. Climb is good. Gear is up. So Harbart's goal will be to keep relatively close to base, and so he's going to, uh, though there seems to be some pitch issues, uh, try to angle up steeply, and then uh, burn, burn as quickly as possible instead of letting the jets run for an extended period of time. You can see the data here as he is above 3.5 kilometers in altitude. Uh, he will uh, maintain velocities below Mach 1 until until above 10 kilometers in altitude. The high pitch angle and turn looks good. Turning to 315 degrees first. And Harvard seems to be pointing it up quite dramatically. No problem with that at all. Velocity seems a bit short. Horizontal speed is currently only 151 meters per second, so uh, Harvard will probably have to level out soon. Uh, this is too steep a climb for him. Approaching 10 kilometers in altitude. Okay, leveling off, possibly aiming for uh, Mach two, uh, Mach one, though. Uh, though he also has to make his turn to 225 in order to uh, proceed out over the Pacific. Again, that is uh, according to safety regulations here for the testing. Seems to be angled down now. Uh, pitch control issues. Uh, we have him at 9.5 kilometers, 291 meters per second. Possibly, possibly transonic issues. Uh, Harbard has positive pitch but lack of control, and he can't head to 225. He has decided to light the RL-10 at approximately 10 kilometers in altitude. He is worried about his remaining fuel uh, on the kerosene engines, and so he wants to get on with the test. Still trying to turn to 225 here. And it looks like he has that. Pitch angle is good. Okay. 
At 15.6 tons takeoff mass, this is the heaviest plane produced by the EDB so far. It seems as if Harbard turned off the jet engines, found that that vertical speed was getting lost, and so he turned them back on again. Uh, he's trying to burn some of the fuel to lighten the plane up in order to maximize uh, his uh, ability his ability to maintain velocity and it looks like he has it now he is keeping the plane at uh, transonic speeds so so that might be an issue for stability but so far he seems to have it We are five minutes into flight. The aircraft is now at 23.5 kilometers in altitude, uh, more than 400 meters per second, 414 meters per second, and rising uh, well above uh, Mach 1.3. Probably Mach 1.4 now. We're above 24 kilometers in altitude, uh, Mach 1.6. Harbard has uh, ignited the jet engines again. This is still well below their operational maximum, uh, which is uh, Mach uh, 2.5 for these jets. Twenty six point five kilometers, twenty six point six kilometers. Above Mach two. Mach two point two. And the RL-10 is out. The RL-10 is out at uh, 28.1 kilometers in altitude, uh, 694 meters per second, uh, 2.3, Mach 2.3, uh, with uh, 68 meters per second of vertical velocity left over, so it is continuing upwards. Uh, the RL-10 went out at 6 minutes and 28 seconds, according to our data. And that is short of the expected burn time. Uh, Hobart lit it at 3.15. The amount of burn that we expected from the rocket was 4 minutes. It only burned for approximately 3 minutes and 13 seconds, and we will have to review why that is. Hobart reached a maximum altitude of 29 kilometers. That is uh, 95,100 feet, and he is now turning back to base. He reached his apoapsis. He reached his apoapsis at 6 minutes and 48 seconds into the flight. At 29 kilometers, that is just shy of the horizontal flight by a winged aircraft record. There's some instability in the plane on return as it turns back to 45 degrees, but that is because uh, Harvard is trying a pretty sharp turn here, uh, trying not to have the very long turn that we saw with Pomeroy Kerman on the DB4, and uh, so he is at Mach 2 and maintaining that uh, with the jets on during this turn. Somewhat risky in terms of stress, but the designers... <laughs> The designers say that there is no structural impediment to this this craft uh, breaking hypersonic speeds, only uh, thermal issues of course. Uh, so structurally it should be sound through very high velocities, even on turns like this.
we expect that uh, Harbart will attempt to maintain altitude here. That was another problem with Pomeroy Kerman with the DB4, and so he will uh, he will be coming in high to maximize his fuel efficiency. Though uh, we believe he has plenty of fuel. If this mission is a success, if the DB5 test is successful, we expect that the next mission for the EDB Aerospace Division will attempt will attempt to go to space, and that is of course breaking the Karman line, uh, which is at a hundred kilometers. It may seem like a stretch to go from. Uh, 25, uh, 29 kilometers, which is the maximum altitude that this aircraft reached, to go to 100 kilometers. But uh, the EDB is confident that the RL-10, if it tests out properly with this jet, uh, can be adapted to a rocket plane that will be able to reach such altitudes. And, of course, return safely. And that means that it will be a plane that launches on its own from the ground, unlike the X-15, and still manages to reach space. Uh, quite a feat. Obviously any plane using the RL-10 cannot light it too quickly because the RL-10 is not very efficient on the ground. We saw it uh, just uh, barely break Mach 2 with the DB-1. So. So the RL-10 alone cannot do it, but with the correct design, the DB-6, we shall see. So here is Harbard Kerman coming back into base. And you can see the effect of the wide quick turn bringing him further south. But he's looking good. Looking good, uh, 11 minutes into the flight. Still very high, still at Mach 1.5. Cloud layer is approximately uh, 7 to 9 kilometers in altitude. It looks like he's aiming to descend through it now. The jets on this plane, by the way, are the venerable GE J79s. And of course, uh, these have been used on planes such as the F 104 Starfighter, the F 4 Phantom, as well as the supersonic bomber, the B 58 Hustler. So Harbard is uh, returning just shy of the high altitude and horizontal flight record by winged aircraft, and that was the NASA Helios. He made 29 kilometers, the Helios made 29.5 kilometers, uh, but we're not sure that uh, his trajectory would have qualified for horizontal flight. It was uh, still sort of... Uh, um, well, at that point it was somewhat of a ballistic trajectory, so... In any case, uh, not quite making it there. Far more horizontal than the other records that uh, have been uh, set by either an air-breathing jet or a mixed-engine design. Those, of course, uh, were basically straight up, rather than uh, approaching it as Harbard did. We have him at about 8.8 .8 kilometers in altitude, uh, still above Mach 1, or uh, Mach 1.1. So coming in fast and high here. He's started decelerating now. The concept behind the DB-6, the first space plane for the EDB, is to uh, 
basically to minimize the jet engines as much as possible and so they will be uh, very light uh, with uh, minimal fuel and in fact the jet engines will not be able to will not be sufficient to bring the aircraft off of the ground it is actually assisted by rockets in order to uh, get off the ground because it simply does not have enough uh, power to get off the ground otherwise uh, once in flight though the jets take over and uh, and they will reach an altitude of approximately six kilometers before the rocket ignites that's not optimal for the RL-10 uh, but it was the best design balance that was struck after all the the EDB does not have the luxury of custom designing engines they uh, simply go on the market and see what engines are available and here we're all hoping that Harbart is uh, is all good he's got his speed brakes out to slow down of course uh, going quite fast uh, he is now uh, still above seven kilometers in altitude but uh, now thanks to speed braking 205 meters per second in velocity so again uh, about uh, 7.5 kilometers uh, braking now below the last vestiges of the cloud cover here throttle is way down the aircraft looks stable in this steep dive and while it had issues in the transonic region on the way up it did not seem to have it didn't seem to have too much of that on the way down Harbard seems to be lined up quite nicely, and uh, we have landing gear down. And landing gear down and locked. View from the cockpit: two point three kilometers, two point two, one hundred and seventy meters per second. Coming in still very high, very quick. Not sure if he'll have enough runway here or whether he'll have to go around. He'll be close thing. Seventeen minutes, fifteen seconds into the flight. Reaching the threshold. It's gonna be tight. Speed breaks out. And uh, he's on the ground. He's on the ground. Still some concern about whether he'll overshoot the runway right here. Touchdown was at 17 minutes and 35 seconds and it looks like he'll be able to slow down before the end of the runway. Harbaugh Kerman, successful flight of the DB-5 Javelin to 29 kilometers in altitude and this will be sufficient for the EDB Aerospace Division to proceed with the DB-6, its first space plane. Uh, much nervousness about that. There are a lot of variables when it comes to space planes, especially when it comes to effectively a re-entry of them. After all, they are doing uh, something quite similar to the Mercury missions, at least the first two, uh, where the capsules were brought to a high altitude and effectively had to recover and retroburn. So we will see how the EDB Aerospace Division manages that with the DB-6. For now, Harbert Kerman, 
uh, marching out to uh, meet with the cameras after a successful flight of the javelin. And Harbart will have his place in the annals of Kerbal aerospace history. And uh, looks like that will be the photo that will go into the record books. And so with that, uh, thank you for watching this coverage of the DB-5 flight test. We hope you will join us for further flight tests from the EDB Aerospace Division. Uh, thank you for watching, and with that, this is the EDB signing off.